As of 2021, the net worth of Lamborghini is estimated to be around $12 billion. A new Lamborghini sports car starts at a little over $200,000, and a well-kept classic Lambo can be worth several millions of dollars. Not too shabby. But did you know that the inventor of this fancy car brand once went to prison? And one of his biggest motivators was an insult that the founder of Ferrari dished out to him. Keep watching to find out more about this unusual story. Growing up in a family of farmers in the formative years of the 20th century, there is no way that anyone could have foreseen how his story would unfold. Born on his family estate in Renazzo, in the north of Bologna, Ferruccio Lamborghini grew up in a grape farmer family. However, the young boy had always had a passion for fast cars and motorcycles. Being drawn more towards farming machines than farming itself, he soon realized that he did not wish to follow in his father's footsteps. He felt a natural affinity with the machinery and wanted to pursue that instead. He took a course in industrial technology at the Fratelli Tadia Institute near Bologna and graduated in 1940, just in time to enter the Italian army. During World War II, Ferruccio was scooped up in the draft and worked for the Italian Air Force. He took the skills he learned during his mechanical engineering study into the Italian RAF and worked as a mechanic. He soon became known as a wizard at mechanical improvisation and fixing engines. But in 1945, he was held as a prisoner of war by the British. They put him to work too. When he got home one year later, Ferruccio had to figure out what he would do next. With all of the hands-on experience that he had gathered over the past years, he had quite some options. The work he had done provided him an intricate knowledge of both farm tractors and military vehicles. So it seemed quite obvious to him that he should find a way to bring those two worlds together. Initially, he started tinkering with cars, but in 1947, Lamborghini Trattori, the Italian word for tractors, was born. Ironically, this was also the year when Ferrari was founded, something that will be discussed later in this video. Why tractors, you may wonder? Well, after his service in the Air Force, the young businessman noticed a shortage of agricultural equipment for farmers. This is why he began buying and repurposing surplus military vehicles into tractors and selling them under the Lamborghini Trattori company name. It did not take long before his venture took off. In the beginning, Ferruccio was building on average one tractor a month, but business was booming and his tractor production grew from the making of one tractor per week to more than four a week. And soon, his company was making 200 tractors per year. More success and growth followed, and the company opened a new tractor factory in 1956. With the new factory, the production of the outstanding Lamborghini brand tractors would be increased even more. By 1960, his business had become so extremely successful that he was able to expand it to manufacturing oil-burning heaters and air conditioning units for buildings. It turned him from the path of respected tractor manufacturer into a wealthy industrialist and started him down the path of becoming one of the household names throughout Italy. While Ferruccio's tractor business had been very successful, his real worth came when he diversified into heating and air conditioning. And as sales grew, so did the cash in his bank account. It allowed him to buy some of the most sought after and best looking cars in the world, such as a Mercedes-Benz 300 SL, an E-Type Jaguar, and two Maserati 3500 GTs. His love for cars was immense, but like many great engineering minds, he had a critical eye for each vehicle he owned. He was constantly searching for the perfect car, and one day, he traveled to Maranello to buy a Pininfarina-designed Ferrari 250 GT. This is where the tale of the automotive feud of the century begins, Ferrari versus Lamborghini. At the time, Ferruccio enjoyed his 250 GT, so much that he bought many more Ferraris over the next few years. But just like he critiqued the other car manufacturers, he had quite a few constructive but critical tips for Ferrari as well. At one point, he was quoted as saying Ferrari was a good car, 
but that they were noisy and rough. And once he even called them repurposed track cars with poorly built interiors. However, this was only the beginning. Throughout its history, Ferraris have been a symbol of power, luxury, speed, and wealth. And some see them as the highest quality cars in the world. It is one of the most influential brands in the world and over time, it has produced some of the most expensive cars in history. It is therefore not surprising that successful entertainers, entrepreneurs, and business people enjoy owning and driving them. However, Ferruccio did not seem to be too convinced. In fact, he was quite unhappy with his Ferrari 250 GT and even went to see Enzo Ferrari to voice his displeasure. That is when things went sour. Thanks to his profitable business, Ferruccio was able to continuously accumulate expensive luxury cars. At one point, he bought two Ferraris, a black one for his wife and a white one for himself. Every time important customers came to visit his tractor company to sign contracts, he would take them to the restaurant in his fancy Ferrari. But while he liked to put on a show, some say that he wasn't a particularly good driver. And because of this, he regularly burned the clutch. After many expensive trips to the Ferrari factory, he decided he had had enough. Frustrated by the recurring clutch problems, he had one of his own tractor mechanics look at the problem. And that is when he made a shocking discovery. After disassembling the engine and transmission, the mechanic noted that the clutch on the car was exactly the same clutch that was used in Ferruccio's tractors. While it was a commercially available clutch that was fitted to many of the top-end sports cars of the days, this discovery did not sit well at all with the wealthy tractor maker. Knowing he was paying 100 times as much for the clutch every time he went in to get his car fixed was like a stab in the heart. He could not understand why someone would use a subpar clutch in such a luxury vehicle. In fact, it upset the disgruntled Ferrari owner so much that he not only replaced the Ferrari clutch with a clutch from his tractor company, but he also decided to pay a visit to the Ferrari factory and present his findings with the founder of the company, Enzo Ferrari. It was the first encounter that would later ignite into the great Lamborghini-Ferrari feud. Many versions of the story have been retold from the meeting of Enzo and Ferruccio. Naturally, with a story that has been told and retold thousands of times over the decades, the history has taken on a life of its own. Undoubtedly, with each retelling, there will be a mix of truth and myth. As the protagonists of the story have long passed away, all we can do is rely on one man who claims to know the real story, as he heard it firsthand from the mouth of Ferruccio himself, Valentino Balboni. Valentino Balboni is an automotive royalty and a true cult figure in the car world. A 40-year employee of Lamborghini, he started his career as an apprentice mechanic but finished as the company's chief test driver. Having worked directly for Ferruccio, Valentino insists he has the real story. This is how it went. The supposed opening line of the conversation was, you built your beautiful cars with my tractor parts. An agitated Enzo Ferrari responded with the words to the effect of, you are a tractor driver, a farmer. You shouldn't complain about driving my cars because they are the best cars in the world. Enzo basically made sure to remind Ferruccio that he is a tractor maker and should stick to building farming equipment and let Ferrari take care of the car business. Of course, this only enraged Ferruccio even more. And in return, he said, correct, I am a farmer, but I'll show you how to make a sports car and I'll do it by myself to show you how a good one should be. There's some speculation on where precisely this confrontation took place but Valentino insists this was the actual exchange between the two. However, others note that Valentino wasn't associated with Lamborghini until 1968, well after the founding of the company. So according to them, he most likely didn't actually see this conversation take place, and the statement should be considered nothing more than hearsay. Nonetheless, the Lamborghini versus Ferrari history is fascinating. In the 20th century, there have been many great rivalries. Microsoft versus Apple, Coca-Cola versus Pepsi, Burger King versus McDonald's, and Adidas versus Puma. But Ferrari versus Lamborghini was a clash of two proud Italian men who refused to give in at all. 
As with many great rivalries, there is more that unites the two men than divides them. Both were from the Emilia-Romagna region of northern Italy. Both grew up with an interest in mechanics and both went on to make some of the world's most memorable and famous cars. These details make the story even more interesting. Some call it the feud between the prancing horse against the raging bull, the racing driver against the tractor maker. And while we may never know what was said exactly, one thing was clear. Whatever happened that day, the meeting between the two businessmen didn't go over well. Insults were exchanged, feelings got hurt, and a rivalry was born. Ferruccio was so furious that he made it his goal to build the best sports car in the world and show Ferrari who is the best. Would he succeed? With money saved up from his successful tractor business and his encounter with Enzo Ferrari fresh in his mind, Ferruccio decided to get going. In May 1963, he officially founded his own motor car company, the Automobili Lamborghini. He founded the factory in the small town of Sant'Agata, Bolognese. It was a carefully selected location in the small town between Modena and Bologna. The ultra-modern plant had plenty of space to grow, and his tractor and heating factory were not too far away. It was also in the middle of the Terra di Motari, aka Engine Country, which was home to the factories of Ferrari, Maserati, and Ducati. And now it was home to Lamborghini as well. The impatient Ferruccio exerted considerable pressure during the creation of the factory, and after just a year, it was already complete. Although a highly qualified source of skilled workers from the sports car industry existed, the wage level was low because the region was otherwise relatively structurally weak. Ferruccio gave the municipality an employment guarantee for his workers, and in return, he received a long-term interest-free loan. He immediately began recruiting the best team he could find, and even hired several Ferrari ex-employees, including Giotto Bizzarini, Franco Scaglione, and Gianpaolo Dallara. The task was clear, to create a luxurious and powerful GT that would reach at least 240 km per hour. On the Autostrade di Sole, the famous Italian motorway which connects Milan with Naples, the result was the Lamborghini 350 GT and the rest is history. Born on April 28, 1916, Ferruccio was born under the zodiac sign Taurus. He truly loved the symbol and saw in it an expression of his forward urging and impetuous character. When he began to manufacture cars under his own name, it therefore seemed obvious that the charging bull would become its badge. The theme also permeated the Lamborghini model names and those of Islaro, Mura, Espada, and Uraco all have bull or bull fighting associations. At the time, many people criticized Ferruccio for building a sports car that would compete directly with such a powerful brand as Ferrari. After all, he was already a successful businessman and quite wealthy from his tractor company. He had also successfully moved into other manufacturing ventures such as air conditioning systems. Why would he begin building cars? Well, as we all know, Sometimes motivation can come in mysterious forms. In this case, it was in the form of a mean insult that Ferruccio probably never forgot. While he confessed that he never actually invented anything, or rather, would simply copy and try to improve on others' work, his legacy has continued to this day. Over the years, the brand has seen financial difficulties from time to time eventually becoming a part of the Audi AG and recognized as Automobili Ferruccio Lamborghini SPA. But the fact remains that Lamborghini is still a sought-after luxury car brand that not many can afford. This was the story of how a skilled mechanic and former prisoner ignited a rivalry by critiquing the maker of his luxury sports car. This feud is a testament to the determination of hard-working, dedicated, and proud pioneers and the rivalry pushed each iconic company to greatness and led to the production of some of the most beautiful and high-performing automobiles in history. Have you ever been motivated by a healthy rivalry with a competitor? Share your story in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to take a look at our channel.